what's going on, Fishaholics? Rich here, and uh, today is an extremely beautiful morning because finally, after two or I, I guess three days here, three nights in the truck, it's not raining, it's not downpouring, and uh, the last couple days uh, I hit the surf really hard with uh, some pretty poor results. My first morning out here, I got into a lot of fish but they were all like super tiny, like micro diaper stripers. So today we're gonna try something different. We're gonna launch the kayak, and uh, I got some crabs. So we're gonna have the option to try and catch some tog, and you would think after like a two day storm, the tog are gonna be, you know, really hungry and looking for some crabs. But then I'll also bring some small stuff, you know, for some albies and some stripers. Let's get loaded up and hit the water. So I really don't have you know, a concrete or bulletproof plan for uh, today's attack. The only thing I really have is I have a dropper loop rigged up for some tog. I got the crabs and then I rigged up another small little rod here for small little plugs. But uh, we're just going to go along, I guess, this rocky bluff here. It drops off really fast, you know, total tog territory. And we're going to fish old spots and then I guess just use the depth finder and uh, try and find some new spots and hopefully catch tog. Just went over some good structure right behind me. I don't know if you can see on the fish finder. Looks, it looks like a pile of some big boulders and then there's a spot above. It looks like there's probably a tog there. Oh yeah, some really good structure here. It's probably gonna be a tog here. Just had a good bite. Oh, I missed the good one. This structure right there looks really golden. It's just coming up a little bit and it looks like a nice little rocky slope. That's where I had that bite. I want to fish right, I'm going to fish right on the edge of it. Oh, there's a good one. Uh, that feels like the right flavor right there. <laughs> Woo! Nice tog. First keeper of the season for me too. Let's check you out, buddy. Whew, nice chunk right there. Even though this is a nice keeper sized tog, I think we're gonna release her. Just as like a good almond. And thank you to the fish gods. Whew. Pound for pound, Tog can pull, I can tell you that. They know how to pull, baby. Let's get back on that spot. Now that was a new rock pile actually that I've never fished before either. I kind of was just going along, and this is probably the edge of it right here. It just kind of comes up and gets a little bit shallower, and right on the edge is where I dropped my crab and just kind of jiggled it there for a little bit. Felt the tap, 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 and boom! Got them. I'm using my seven foot six Mojo Inshore spinning rod. So that little light tackle setup, catching a fish like that out of you know 30 feet of water is insanely fun. No better fight. Well, I mean I can't say that except for maybe catching like albies and say like a 20 pound bass. You know that's pretty fun on that rod too. But you know catching tog that size, that's like a really good fight. So this morning I collected all my crabs and just got a bunch of these Asian crabs. And what I like to do is take off the two big pinchers and then take off all the legs on the one side and then I'll leave the like you know some legs on the other side. And I feel like that'll just help give it some action in the water, especially if this little crab stays alive on the hook. And I like to go through the back bottom socket and out the back of the crab just like that.
there's one. Whoa. All right, not bad. Looks like a little male. Not as big as my first one, but we'll take it. 15 incher. There's definitely some fish on this little spot. It's pretty awesome that I found this little piece here. Or it's actually a pretty big piece now that I'm, you know, tracking where I'm going on the fish finder. I can see exactly the entire area where I'm covering. And uh, it just seems like a big rock pile or hump out here that comes up, you know, it comes up from 30 and then it starts coming up right here to about 26, 20 feet of water. And then, at, and then once it comes up, it's like this entire finger in front of me. But uh, the fish are sitting on top of it, on the side of it. So that was pretty cool. That fish I caught on the top of it. Just went over the hot spot, or the high spot. So it should be dropping off right there on the side. That's where I'm gonna find a big one. Come on, big tog. I think he has it, there he is. Right where I said he's gonna be. It was kind of just a nice, easy slope there, and right on the side, this guy was hanging. little girl there definitely a small female fifteen inches I don't even know why I'm measuring them I don't even know if I'm gonna keep one because I don't have a cooler with ice back of the truck I've been crashing in the truck the last three nights so I don't know if I you know I'm gonna leave tonight or if I'm gonna stay another night tonight if I stay, then I gotta buy a cooler. Ah. The tog bite is on though right now. Oh, getting the taps. Oh, just had a hit, but I missed. Tap, tap, tap. There he is. Oh, it's a runty one. Feels runty. Oh, it's a sea bass. Didn't expect that. Dang, another sea bass. Getting bigger too. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. There's one. Oh man, I'm crushing the sea bass. It's actually not a bad one right here. This is probably a keeper or close to it. Whoo! It's getting a lot rougher out here. Let's see how much bait we have. We have about two dozen three dozen crabs left which I think that's perfect just to catch like one or two more decent tog and uh, you know then at least we're going that way on our way back so the wind will be with us and uh, probably within the next hour I want to be back at the beach load the kayak up and then I'm gonna switch gears and go surf casting
So let's put on another crab and uh, try and get another tog here. Come on out, buddy. All right, let's catch him. Oh my gosh. What is this? That's a good one. If this is a tog, this is a good one. Okay, I think it's a pretty good one. Oh, he's hooked weird. Still a decent one. Whoo! Heck yeah, man. Oh, oh, easy baby, easy. Whew. A nice football right there. I hooked her in the top of the head. That's why she felt so big. I thought that was gonna be like a 10 pounder. Whoo! Not so graceful, <laughs> but uh, that was a nice one. Try and see if we can get one more decent one like that. And then uh, get out of here. I love it when they hit it like that though, or like when you don't even feel them tap it, it's just solid weight. And they pull so dang hard in the beginning, it's like a, a rock, it's like you hook the bottom. There he is. One last fish. Is it a tatog? Oh uh, yeah, it's a little one. A little tatog. All right, guys, we're back. Kayaks loaded up, we're ready to go. Okay, man, I feel beat just from that wind and sun burning down on my face. I forgot my hat. Thank you to the fisherman who gave me a free Coke. <sighs> Waking me up a little bit. Probably gonna hit the South Shore in like 30 minutes or something, trying to get on a dusk bite. But uh, before I do that, I kind of wanted to show you guys how I was rigging. And I was just using a simple dropper loop rig. So just a clinch knot to my 70 pound barrel swivel. Then what I like to do is I like to make the dropper loop, you know, for my four aught Gamagatsu bait hook. So uh, I probably have about a three foot section of this 20 pound fluoro. So I grab maybe about a foot apart and make a loop and I make sure these two lines are laying adjacent and then I take my finger put it through this loop and wrap it around those two adjacent lines say maybe five times and then you create actually a hole there or another loop where those two lines are laying and it can be a little tricky To open it up but once you get it open then you take the loop that you were wrapping and you grab that and pull it through that hole and then I like to grab the loop with my teeth and pull it tight just like that and uh, there you have it now you have a dropper loop and then on the bottom half you know just do a simple overhand knot loop and that's where you can loop on your sinker and that's basically how I was rigging pretty simple but one thing that I was doing a little different which I like to do when I'm using this rig instead of just looping on your hook basically where you take this and put it through the eye of the hook and then you know through back back through the loop and pull it tight I like to do a palmer knot okay pull that tight 
and that's your Palmer knot. And if you look here, this loop now is kind of more together and more of like an adjacent, and you get like a stronger connection, I feel like. And this will how it you know kind of sits, just like that. And you hook on your crab, and that's pretty much the rig I was using. Pretty simple stuff. You know, I really want to get uh, some jigs and get into jigging more. I don't really jig too often. I don't have any jigs, but uh, we'll probably change it up in maybe my next hog video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you know when I post my next Rhode Island, New Jersey, or Montauk video or whatever because I'm all over the place. And <laughs> uh, don't forget to uh, check out these hats. You know, I made up these Fishaholic cats, and I'll put a link down in the description. And uh, it helps support my channel and make these videos, which... Uh, you know, I really need some help with making these videos. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, more or less than me just, you know, getting here to the water, launching and going out. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And never forget, live to fish, fish to live. And I'll see you guys in the next one.